Welcome everybody to the Short Sports Show. I am your host Daniel Short. Today is January 1st, 2016, the first show of 2016. I'm excited to share it with you guys. It is awesome. Uh I completely just whiffed on Monday's show thinking that was that was the last show of 2015. I I don't know why it didn't come to my head. I thought maybe I don't know. I just wasn't there, but Hoping that everybody had a great uh, way to end the year with great college football games. Uh, Other than if you're Oklahoma and Michigan State fans, well, you know, there's always next year. Um, And for Alabama Clemson fans, I know you guys closed the the year off strong and are ready to start 2016 off strong as well. So thank you guys for joining us here on the Short Sports Show. Uh, As you heard in the intro, that is Triune featuring EQ. You can buy their new single forever on iTunes. All links are down in the description below. And we're going to talk a lot of college football and the NFL. Um, So many things to talk about. So little time. Uh, I mean, we got a dozen amount of games uh, that are going to happen today that are great games all happening at multiple almost the same time. So you're going to have to like go back or if you have multiple monitors, maybe you could be able to watch both. It's it's just going to be a lot to get in. And that's what we're going to try to do here. We're going to try to wrap it up pretty quickly uh but before we start the show as always follow me on twitter at short underscore sports 24 7 and become a fan on facebook the short sports show again all links are down and below in the description and if you want to watch any of the highlights from these college football games uh be sure to go to my youtube channel the short sports show again down in the description below and uh you can check it out there so let us go on with it Houston wide receiver Demarcus Ayers has decided to forego his senior season and enter the NFL draft. Um, me personally, I think he he jumped on this a little too early. I think he there's no way he's a first or second round pick. Uh, I just it's not happening. He's great, but not a first or second round. So why he decides to skip his senior year and go to the NFL draft uh, concerns me a little bit here. He said, quote, it was a very tough decision. Speaking to my family and everybody Thursday morning, uh, everybody letting me know, DA, go out with a bang. Uh, That's what he told the Houston Chronicle. And he did that for Houston. They had a huge win. He had nine catches for 82 yards. He also threw a touchdown uh, pass for uh, for the Cougars as they defeated Florida State in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Uh, This season, he had a career-high 98 catches for 1,200 yards and six touchdowns. While that's all great, and it truly is, he had an outstanding season. There are a ton of wide receivers coming out that are going to be picked before him, that's for sure. And honestly, you if I'm looking at it, if I'm jumping to go to the NFL draft, and I basically have to be a guaranteed first-round draft pick to, to, to leave my senior year. Because if you are doing it because you want to help your family and, and money wise, and because you don't you don't want to, you don't want to be the person to say, "Oh, I'm just leaving for the money," even though it's most likely the reason, but you want to have a better reason. There is a huge drop off from anywhere in the first round, and especially going into the second, third, and, all, and you you know the way. It's just a huge drop off, and given that next year there's not a whole a lot of wide receivers that we truly know about obviously it can, it's all going to change come 2016 uh, college football season but the way Houston has their season has gone this year 13 and 1 huge win against Florida State and what is potential going to be next year I mean you open against Oklahoma at home well basically at home it's at the Texan Stadium but still at home uh you can have a big year with Todd Herman. You know, he's coming back. Greg Ward Jr., he's going to be the starting quarterback. He'll be a senior next year. We have a lot of guys on offense that are returning. Defensively, not a whole lot, but this should have been – he should have stayed for his senior year, basically. He should have stayed. Um, but best of luck to him. I like DeMarcus Ayers a lot. Again, a great year for Houston. But I think you just jumped the gun just a, a little too soon. I think you should have just played out your senior year and – uh most likely could have been mid to late round, uh, first round draft pick next year. This year, not so much. Uh, obviously, depressing news came in early Thursday morning. Not a way I wanted to close out the year as a TCU football fan. 
I'm not going to ignore it. I know it happened. And, of course, it's just strange how it happened right when I woke up. TCU starting quarterback Trevon Boykin said, Words can't describe how sorry I am after being arrested and charged with a felony Thursday morning. Boykin was involved in a fight at a bar that, uh, and then allegedly struck a, a bicycle patrol officer early Thursday morning in San Antonio. He was formally charged with assaulting a public servant, uh, which is a third degree felony in the state of Texas. He posted a $5,000 bond and was released from custody late Thursday morning. Uh, Of course, TCU plays Oregon on Saturday in the Valero Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. And uh, TCU uh, head coach Gary Patterson really didn't say too much. He has a press conference at uh, 11 a.m. this morning. So I'm going to be sure to try to wrap this up by then. I don't think we should go that far. Um, But, yeah, it's just... uh, not great. He said this, quote, Trevon Boykin and junior wide receiver Preston Miller have been suspended for Saturday's game due to a violation of team rules. We are disappointed in their actions and apologize to the TCU Horn Frogs Nation, Valero Alamo Bowl, and the city of San Antonio. A TCU spokesman confirmed Boykin was sent home following his arrest and suspension. It was not uh, immediately clear what Miller did get suspended for, Um but this is what basically what happened because uh, I want to make sure all the facts that we have gathered so far are actually out there and not what people just read on uh, on the media and not really fill in everything. So real quick, just kind of skim through it. Thursday morning, uh, they had a news conference with San Antonio Police Chief uh, William McManus, who confirmed reports that Boykin and some teammates were at at a uh, established uh, bar named uh, establishment. So excuse me. Uh, Pat, uh, Pat O'Brien's just before 2 a.m. when some uh, other citizens uh, recognized the quarterback and began trash talk uh, to him. Boykin became upset and a scuffle ensued in the melee. Boykin uh, struck a bar employee, which was not on uh, purpose. He <laughs> meant to swing at one of the, which doesn't make it any better, but I'm just saying he meant to swing at one of the people that were smack talking and just accidentally hit the bar employee uh and boykin and those who were with him which that's what gets me and we're going to talk about that uh were removed from the bar and the fight continued san antonio bicycle police officers arrived at the scene with the help of bar bouncers tried to stop the fight according to the incident report uh provided by san antonio police department the suspect which was sadly boykin uh was very aggressive and being held back by the group he was with Members of his group stated they would get him back to the hotel they were staying at. After walking away, the suspect, which again bystanders told police it was uh, Boykin, uh, charged our officers. Uh, McManus said he was swinging and uh, struck an officer in the face. Several officers then took Boykin to the ground. Uh, after officers were threatened to use a stun gun on Boykin, he was arrested. And in addition to the charge uh, of assaulting a police officer, he faces charges of resisting arrest and public intoxication. Uh, McManus, the uh, police chief, said, quote, We don't know if he was swinging at the officer or somebody behind him. In any event, the officer was struck in the face and suffered injuries. That sucks. Um, the thing that gets me, and obviously I don't want any more suspensions uh, from TCU football. I don't want any more players. But it does say Boykin... Uh, again, was with a group of friends, his whoever they were, most likely teammates, but yet only two players were suspended for violation of team rules, which I'm assuming if the violation of team rules was not just hitting, <laughs> uh, was not getting in a fight, was for breaking curfew. Uh, Doug Meacham, the offensive coordinator for TCU, said Boykin was in his room when coaches did curfew check at midnight. But then Boykin went back out, and apparently Pat O'Brien's is located three blocks from TCU's team hotel. Um, yeah, so who were the other players, possibly? Or maybe he did just have friends in San Antonio. Uh, I don't know. But it, it's definitely upsetting that this news happened. It was, uh, it was something I didn't really believe, because Boykin is the last person on this football roster you would have thought would get in a fight. And honestly, if it had to be somebody, I don't want it to be Boykin. Anybody other than Boykin. Not because he's the quarterback and he gives us a chance to win. I don't care if we beat Oregon. Oregon's a great team. Uh, 
whichever way it goes. It's just I didn't want to happen to Boykin. Everything he's done, <clears throat> excuse me, um, from his redshirt se- uh, freshman season when he was on the Rose Bowl roster as a redshirt freshman, all the way until now, it's just been a great story. It shows you to never quit. It shows you um, no matter when how many people are doubting you when saying you don't have the skills to be a quarterback or a collegiate football player at the highest level, he stuck in it. And he prevailed, and he became probably the best quarterback in TCU history. He broke uh, many records, including Andy Dalton's record. Um, you know, it, it's it's just unfortunate that this had to happen, um, especially to Boykin. And you would you would have thought that he would have known better to not not really just not just get in a fight, but not go out at all. I mean, I understand one of the a few other players that respond to this that said that it's normal for players to break curfew and leave. Fine. That If that's normal, okay. But as a leader of a football team, as a captain, that should not be the normal. So while I do not hate Boykin, obviously we're upset for him. Um, Boykin is still my guy. I am still rooting for Boykin all the way. This is The only thing that sucks the worst about this is that this this was his last game. He's a senior. It's it's over after this. He's got nothing else until the NFL and, and what he can do, whether he's going to be a quarterback or a skilled player, which I still hope he's a quarterback. And this was a game to, you know, even though Oregon has a terrible defense, this was a time to go out there, get a huge W for TCU, and show the NFL one last time what you got before the TCU Pro Day. And I don't know if he's going to get an invite to the Senior Bowl, especially now. And uh, the combine, who knows? Um, but yeah, that it just it sucks that this was the way to end it. And to multiple people that are not TCU fans, you know that this is how they're going to remember Boykin and not remember him for all the other great things that he did on and off the field, which sucks. But it's just how it goes sometimes. Um, last bit of it. Uh, Running back Aaron Green, which is Boykin, one of Boykin's closest friends, called the incident, quote, extremely heartbreaking, uh, said, he's still my brother. He's still our brother. We love him. We hope everything works out. I'm hurting from it. I won't lie. This kid, this is a kid with an extremely bright future, probably one of the best football players I've ever played with. He's a good person, too. You just hate to see that happen. I pray everything works out, and he has another opportunity to get out and do what he's great at. Uh, Meacham and his fellow co-offensive coordinator, Sonny Cumbie, said they're leaning towards starting senior Brad Kohlhausen um, over redshirt freshman uh, Foster Sawyer against Oregon, but have not yet decided. Cumbie thinks uh, the arrest was out of character for Boykin, uh, saying, quote, Trevon means a lot to me and my family. He's a great kid, and we love him dearly. Again, Boykin was a senior who passed over 3,500 yards, 31 touchdowns to 10 picks. Uh, and was second team All-American last season and a candidate for the Heisman Trophy this year before an injury took him out uh, against Kansas. Just sucks. That's all it is. It just sucks. But um, who knows? Hopefully Oregon's defense is just as bad as everybody says it is, and maybe Bram and Foster, whoever goes out there, can uh, can still get the job done. But it's going to be a shootout. We need a boy can to be there, especially with Dox, uh, Doxon out as well. It's basically basically going to be the Oklahoma game again. And the great thing about that is we were one bad play call away from beating or, uh, Oklahoma and being 11-1. and one. So that's a good thing. And Oklahoma's defense is a ton better <laughs> than Oregon, and that was in Norman. So if there's any positives that we can look at as Frog fans is that, look, we've somewhat been in this position before except that uh, these two quarterbacks in Sawyer and, and, and Kohlhausen, they had much more time to get first-team reps. All they have is uh, today and uh, a jog through tomorrow. Obviously, the game is tomorrow, so they just got one small practice today and then uh, the jog through, which I'm guessing is just like when you're warming up normal stuff, and then they'll lean with whoever goes it. thing is, with Foster, it's like great. He he showed it that first seventy two yard bomb uh <laughs> against Oklahoma that he had to Kobe listen being it looked like okay this this kid's got it. But he just he when he throws the ball out, I mean <laughs> he 
he has the hang time of a punter. That thing is up there forever. It's up to grabs for anybody. Um, so whether he's learned from that and Bram, who's a senior, almost let he basically led the comeback against uh, Oklahoma. Who knows? Who knows? But most likely, Bram is going to be the quarterback for TC. Just overall, a bad situation. Obviously, we hope we can get a W, so that way it clears it up a little bit, not what if type of thing, but who knows? All right, let's move on. Uh, three Ohio State Buckeyes players will uh, forego their senior year and enter the NFL draft. On Thursday morning, head coach Urban Meyer said, quote, three have already said they're going to leave. That's uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Joey Bosa, and Cardell Jones. It's a very good junior class, and I, I take my hat off to them. Todd McShay has Joey Bosa as his number one selection in the mock draft, 1.0, which is stupid. Uh, and Mel Kuyper has Bosa ranked number one on his updated big board. So that is that. Um, don't really care. I still don't understand why Cardell Jones is going to leave. <laughs> That's probably the dumbest decision he's making because um, he's definitely not a top four rounds. He, he can't be. You 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 can't tell me that you're going to go – based on the first few games earlier this season and last the last three games of last year, that's that's your tape. That's all you're going to give me. You struggled this year. Yes, you did great last year. Again, you struggled this year. And instead of transferring away and playing collegiate football somewhere else to build up your tape, build up playing time, which is the main thing, you're going to say, no, nah, I'm good enough. I'm going to go to the NFL draft. You are ridiculous to think you're going to be drafted in the top four. And if anybody takes you higher and higher than the four rounds, it's got to be Cleveland just because they're so dumb at, at making draft picks. That's it. And honestly, that's not a good situation for you, but that's it. Uh, Clemson All-American defensive end Shaq Lawson suffered a left knee injury in the first quarter of the Tigers' 37-17 win over Oklahoma on Thursday in the college football playoff. An Orange Bowl, but he insisted it will not keep him off the field when the Tigers play for the college football championship. Uh, saying, quote, I, I'm going to be ready to play in the national championship. I'm going to be back. Lawson, uh, yeah, excuse me. Lawson was ruled out to start the second half. Uh, Coach Dabo Sweeney said Lawson suffered a, lig- a ligament sprain. Now, the Clemson defense, they didn't do too bad when Lawson was not out there as they sacked Baker Mayfield five times and held the Sooners to 121 yards over the final two quarters. Shaq Lawson, who was a junior, had already declared for the NFL draft, so obviously wants to get out there and show what he can do against um, a team named Alabama. Um, Yeah, so so much for my pick of Michigan State. They were out of it. Alabama came to play. And remember when Nick Saban said the dif- the difference between this year's team and the past couple years teams is that this team is itching. It, it wants it more than the other teams did. The other teams believed that they were just good enough to be there and, and, and win. This team not only believes they're good enough and, and should be there, but they want to be there. They want it. They want to win. And they just have that the killer instinct in them. And they definitely had it against Michigan State, just absolutely dominating them. And I'm not just going by the scoreboard. I watched the game, and holy crap, it's just Cyrus Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Jacob Coker played the game of their lives. They truly did. Um, And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, as we now know, it's Clemson, number one, going against number two, Alabama. First time we're having one, two go against each other, but Alabama's already a touchdown favorite and maybe rightfully so just the way they played the past few games, but for Clemson fans, don't worry. You're going to hear the facts that the Crimson Tide have been favored 80 of their past 81 games, including all three national championship games uh, appearances under Nick Saban, which they won all three of those. And that Clemson's 3-12 and all-time against Alabama, and they've lost the past 12 meetings, which is the Tigers' worst record against any opponent uh, that has played at least 10 times. Which, who knows when the last time they even played. I, I wasn't even going to look it up. It could be like the 70s or 80s. I don't know. Anyways, but as a Clemson fan, not me, just saying for Clemson fans, don't worry about the spread. Because remember last year, Oregon was a six-point favorite, basically seven-point touchdown, favorite over Ohio State 
and the Buckeyes just went on to win it 42 to 20. Just saying. Um, we'll talk more in depth about the about the championship game come uh, next week's show because obviously they don't play until January 11th, which is a Monday. Uh, so that Monday, not this Monday coming up, but the next Monday is when they play, and we'll have a championship show just on that and going in depth about Clemson, recapping their year uh, as well as Alabama, and then go with our picks, which uh, yeah, <laughs> not gonna be the greatest. Um, but yeah, so. It's going to be Alabama Clemson. It was a great matchup between those two teams and who they played uh, with Oklahoma and Michigan State. Now, I picked Clemson, but I did pick Michigan State to win. So, ah, one for one. Clemson just went off. It, Baker Mayfield did what he could, but the offensive line just was getting harassed and, and couldn't do very much. Uh, Baker Mayfield, 26 of 41, 311 yards and a touchdown. Wayne Gallman. Clemson running back really hasn't been talked about national media much, and he just went off. He he did everything. 26 carries, 150 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, he was making Oklahoma just miss everywhere. Even Bob Stoops said, you know, credit to Galman because he made us look like fools. It, it, he just, just no defender after about two defenders, and then he would get tackled every time just carrying the ball. Uh, I do feel bad for Sterling Shepard, though. One of my favorite. I believe, and you're going to hear here first. I tweeted it last night, and I'm saying it here now. Sterling Shepard is going to be just like Tyler Lockett. Not going to be drafted very high, but has the same same skill set. Maybe not as fast as, <laughs> as Tyler Lockett, but same type of player, same story, and just almost the same skill set. Uh, skill set. So uh, watch out for Sterling Shepard, just saying. But anyways, Clemson goes on to win it 37-17. to They pitch a shutout in the second half, and Clemson wins the Orange Bowl. Again, highlights are on my YouTube channel, The Short Sports Show. Go ahead and check them out. And then finally, to wrap it up, was 38 to nothing. Alabama just dominating Michigan State. Jake Coker, I think I said Jacob. Jake Coker, 25 of 30. 286 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, he just, every throw he was making was just on point against a, a pretty solid Michigan State defense. Now, it's not the same as the past few years, but still pretty solid and absolutely just dominated them. Derrick Henry still got his 20 carries, but only 75 yards, two touchdowns. Michigan State did a good job of stopping Derrick Henry when it could, but he did get a lot of, you know, five yards, and then he'll get three yards, and then another five yards, and another two yards. It was just kind of back and forth. They did a good, good job stopping him, just not so much on Jake Coker. And Alabama, I mean, they, they just had that with them. And it's one of those common things that a lot of people may have not thought about thinking Jake Coker can win this game because, honestly – I thought it'd be a flip. I thought it'd be a reversal. Not by the score. I'm, I'm talking about passing-wise. Jake Coker and Connor Cook. I really thought Cook, had, with the experience, leadership, and the players around him, that he would be able to make these throws. He would be able to get this team you know, finishing drives. Did not happen. He stared down many receivers. He looked like he, he was a freshman or a sophomore. He just did not look like he belonged in the game whatsoever. I feel bad for Mark D'Antonio. I, I truly do. Um, and then Calvin Ridley, one of the guys that I talked about early in their year, and then I just forgot about him throughout the entire season, really. And now he comes back to play. He's done this all year long. I, I don't know why I have not been talking about him. Eight receptions, 138 yards, two touchdowns. Perfect dynamic weapon that uh, Alabama has. <sighs> I... Not going to say who I'm picking, but, man, it is looking very, very tough for one team to win. <laughs> That's all I will say, and I'm going to let you fill in the blanks from there. Um, but Alabama will meet Clemson in the College Football Championship in Glendale, Arizona, January 11th, and it's going to be a great one. Uh, Houston and Florida State went at it. That was a great game as well. Sean McGuire, pro- t- you know, props to him for playing basically on one foot after being knocked down in the first quarter. Um, Houston was their defense. I, I thought they would play a little bit better, but I guess given the talent, you know, the talent difference, they have never really seen a Florida State. And uh, 
I knew this offense was going to put up points. I had no idea that Florida State entering the game that the entire season, they had never allowed a team to score more than 25 points on them. The whole year, they were the only team in the FBS to, to not allow more than 25 points by a team. And Houston just goes out and puts 38 on them, uh, just dominating. Greg Ward, uh, 67 yards rushing twenty uh, on 20 carries, two touchdowns. Travis Rudolph for Florida State. Shows his uh, his future for pro- for next year in 2016. Seven receptions, 201 yards, and a touchdown. Yet, you know, one of them was kind of a, a, a gimme. It was a big gain, too, as well. Um, but, you know, Houston's kind of just playing back, not trying to give up a touchdown. Almost did, though. Uh, but, yeah, Houston, what a way to top, top the year with an impressive win over Florida State and heading into next year with Todd Herman, you know, coming back. He's a better team to watch out for and uh, uh, see what they will do. If uh, I doubt there's any you know expansion for any conference. Hopefully, Big 12 might, but I doubt it. With Oklahoma entering the playoffs, they're and they you know they're not going to let it happen. But anyways, that is it. We do have some games today, so we'll talk about those really quickly. At 11 a.m., you have Northwestern taking on Tennessee, and while I want Tennessee to win, you know. And they probably will. I just so many games they've they've had the big lead and then they let it go. Why why, why would anything change for a bowl game? The only thing is Northwestern offensively, most likely probably the worst offense of a ten and two team. <laughs> it's just bad. Their defense is what wins these games for them. And I'm gonna pick Northwestern. I think Joshua Dobbs makes a few mistakes. No one uh, on Tennessee really just, ah, you know, you can watch out. They don't scare me, uh, especially with the Northwestern defense. And uh, Justin Jackson, of running back for Northwestern, I believe he could get a few things done. Tennessee is a nine-point favorite. Again, this game is on a, uh, on ESPN2 at 11 a.m. Central Time. I'm taking Northwestern. Then at 12 p.m. on ABC, you have Michigan and Florida. I know Michigan ended the year bad with a terrible loss to Ohio State, giving up 40 points. But Ohio Ohio State was just a very upset team and wanted a whole lot more than Michigan did. So, especially with the weak offense of Florida, I'm definitely taking Michigan here. Michigan is a a four-and-a-half-point favorite. This is Citrus Bowl, and I'm taking Michigan. Then again at 12 p.m. Central, I told you there's a lot of games at the same time, great games. You have the Battle Frog Fiesta Bowl. Notre Dame, Ohio State, Ohio State a five and a half point favorite. I want to take Notre Dame to win this. I, I really do. I just feel like Ohio State just is the more complete team defensively, offensively to get it done. And uh, Ezekiel Elliott might want to go out with a bang and get a W. So I'm taking Ohio State here. 4 p.m. Central Time on ESPN is the best bowl game, at least by the bowl itself. It is the Rose Bowl. In Pasadena, California, going to be great weather there. It is number six, Stanford, taking on Iowa. Iowa, we all remember, the undefeated Iowa until the last week of the year, losing to Michigan State, which really got to piss them off a ton, knowing that Michigan State just got blown out 38 to nothing. And that could have been Iowa in there, and maybe it's a different score. Not saying they beat Alabama. I don't think they do, especially the way we saw Alabama play. But that defense of Iowa going against the off, oh man, now, now it makes you really want the Iowa Alabama game. But uh, Christian McCaffrey, of course, going in there. Kevin Hogan, his last game. Rose Bowl. What else do you need to say? I'm going to take Iowa for it. I think Iowa wins this game, knowing that they they're going to have the attitude that TCU had last year, saying we should have been in the playoffs. It should have been us, even though Iowa did lose, you know, last week. But I think Iowa gets this. Stanford is a six point favorite, but. Gonna take Iowa here. Seven thirty Central Time, the last game uh, on Saturday or Friday. I can't. I don't know my days. Number sixteen Oklahoma State taking on number twelve Ole Miss in the All State Sugar Bowl. Seven thirty Central Time on ESPN. Ole Miss is an eight point favorite, and the reason I'm taking Ole Miss is because they don't want to lose to another Big Twelve school, and especially after last year. Woo, that was a fun game. Um. And I just think they're a, a lot better, even though Kim Dietschy won't play. I think they're just going to have it. Chad Kelly's going to want to go out really well. Um, 
as, as, as well as La- Laquan uh, Treadwell, especially the way Oklahoma State got blown out by Oklahoma. This is somewhat, uh, I don't want us to compare it too much to Oklahoma's offense with Ole Miss, but enough to get things done. I think Ole Miss gets this victory by maybe a touchdown, um, and Ole Miss defeats Oklahoma State. So that's it for college football. Let's move on to the NFL. I don't know how much we got in the NFL. Uh, a couple things, a couple things. Um, so Carolina, Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton announced Wednesday night on Twitter that he and his longtime girlfriend, uh, Kia, uh, that's what I'm going to say, were, quote, blessed to have a son. Newton said he would reveal the na- name of his son in due time, but the Charlotte Observer reported that the child is named, this is his name, not, not joking at all. His name is Chosen Sebastian Newton. The baby weighed nine pounds, six ounces, and 20 inches long. Um, Congratulations, first of all, Cam Newton. Awesome having his first baby and having a son. Chosen? Really? Why? That's, I don't know. Come on now. Uh, but he did have some funny quotes when he was talking to the media about it, saying, quote, I took him out for a jog yesterday. He was running alongside with me. No, I'm serious. He has a couple scholarship offers already on the table. I'm not pushing him to be anything. He's just a super already. Obviously talking about how uh, uh, Cam Newton is Superman. Uh, but he made it clear that it had nothing to do with Carolina scoring a season low 13 points in the lost Atlanta because it happened uh, just around that time. Said, quote, yeah, I had a child pe- that the people that needed to know have known for a while. There's not there's uh, nothing's pretty much changed beside our record. The focus is still the same to find ways to become one and oh, we had a lot of distractions last week. The main one was a practice schedule more than anything. That's probably been the the least amount of practice since I've gotten here between Christmas Day off and the heavy rains Panthers had one full practice inside or excuse me outside they were forced to practice in the charlotte convention center on wednesday so that's what's leading to some of the struggles they had against uh, atlanta last week in a loss but i don't know chosen really hey. the buffalo bills plan to cut high price defensive end mario williams this offseason and williams declined to comment about the report when approached uh williams has been expendable because of his contract it's too expensive. It's just too much. And he struggled to make the transition with Rex Ryan's defense. He has two years left on a six-year, $100 million contract he signed in free agency in 2012. Williams is set to make $11.5 million base salary next year. And by cutting him, the Bills would save more than $12 million under the salary cap. So definitely bye-bye. And where he goes, who knows? Three days before his second season with the Cleveland Browns concludes, um, head coach Mike Pettin has said he has received no insurances that from owner Jimmy Haslam that he will be back in 2016. Now, again, there was a report last week saying that they were going to keep Pettin, but they were going to fire Farmer. That's kind of like died in the water right now. We, we still don't know what's happening. Uh, but Pettin said on Thursday, quote, I didn't ask and my focus each week, just like the players should be, is my job which is getting this team prepared. Now, Penn has signed a four-year uh, deal in a, with the team option to, in the fifth, uh, for the fifth, excuse me, I can't talk, uh, to be the team's coach in 2014. The Browns started 7-4 a year ago, but now have lost 17 of the past 20 games. Asim, uh said in training camp he would not blow it up after this season, and, but a 3-12 a and 12 record campaign has led to much speculation about Penn's future, and rightfully so. Uh, and he's all, all, uh, what is going on? There's also been uh, some arguments between defensive coordinator Jim O'Neill, and he said that he doesn't go into any game worried about his job, saying, quote, if they want me here, I'll be here, and, and I'll give it everything I have. If they don't, I'll be somewhere else and be successful and give it everything I have. Ouch. So we'll see. There should be some changes with the Cleveland Browns, including possibly Johnny Mansell now. Uh, there's reports that since he's played his last game now this season with the concussion uh, that ruled him out this week, that he will be traded for low ra- low draft pick uh, next uh, for next obviously this upcoming year's draft. <sighs> Johnny football, I still believe, I still believe. 
Marcus Mariota said he was sorry to see Chip Kelly, the coach who re, uh, recruited him to Oregon, fired Tuesday by the Philadelphia Eagles, saying, quote, Obviously, we had a connection through Oregon, but again, my mindset isn't on that. It's unfortunate, Ch- uh, Coach uh, Kelly, and, and the situation, but I'm sure whatever he ends, uh, whatever team he ends up going to, he'll have success. I think he's a proven uh, he can be a winner the first two years. I think the past year was tough. He didn't. He probably didn't have the season he wanted to. But to win ten games the first two years says a lot about what he's able to do, and says a lot about his coaching. Now, Mariota hasn't talked to Kelly since his firing, and with Mario uh, in last year's draft, Kelly tried to trade up and get Mariota, but obviously the Titans kept him. Now, the Titans are expected to move on from interim coach Mike Marlocki on Monday and begin a search for a new coach, but there hasn't been any indications of whether the upper management wants Kelly. I think Kelly would say yes in a heartbeat if Tennessee offers him the head coaching job. I think if they interview him, they're going to try to keep it on the low as much as they possibly can because I don't think uh, they want a lot of people going out there and thinking it's already assumed that he is that Chip Kelly is going to be the next head coach for, uh, for Tennessee. I made a video on it on YouTube. You can listen to it over there strictly on YouTube, the short sports show. Um, talking about where Chip Kelly might end up the de- uh, from the NFL, potential spots for potential spots in the NFL to college football, some other spots over there and what he plans on doing. Um, my biggest hope, I hope he goes to Tennessee bees uh, so he can coach with uh, Marcus Mariota. Obviously, he still wants to coach him as he, again, tried to trade for him this uh, in the draft this past year. So um, we'll see with that. But I would like to see Chip Kelly go to Tennessee. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts do not plan to retain head coach Chuck Pagano at the end of the season. The thought had been that Pagano would not return next season after he turned down a contract extension. Now that the Colts uh, have struggled this season, his relationship with Colts GM Ryan Grigson has turned, quote, toxic by sources. Uh, The Colts entered the season with Super Bowl aspirations after reaching the AFC Championship game last year. But the record has uh, it's been their worst record since 2011 when, you know, right now they're seven and eight and are on the brink of missing the playoffs for the first time since Grigson and Pagano were hired back in 2012. So. I like Chuck Pagano, and I have a feeling that if he is fired, which most likely will happen, I don't believe it should, but uh, it will most likely. I have a feeling because of the San Diego Chargers just being dumb. While I like Chuck Pagano, I have a feeling the Chargers are going to fire Mike McCoy and go get Chuck Pagano and basically make us... Whatever city we end up, whether San Diego or Los Angeles, might as well just call us the Colts because they're bringing, you know, we brought Donald Brown. We brought a few other Colts players that just didn't work out. And then hiring Chuck Pagano would be like, what are we doing? Because we have the former G, uh, G, or GM assistant of the Indianapolis Colts now with the Chargers as GM. I just have a feeling that's what's going to happen. If it does, I'm done with the Chargers. I guarantee you, I would be done with the Chargers if they hired Chuck Pagano. Again, I like Chuck Pagano. I just, it'd just be dumb. It'd just be dumb to fire him. I like Mike McCoy still. Give it one more year. It's just this team is so bad. That's all it is. <laughs> it's just the team's bad. Uh, Washington said they will play their starters versus the Cowboys on Sunday. Many of the Washington players are hurt, so that will force some starters to play, even though they've locked up. The NFC East, they are champs. They can't move any more spots. They can't be the third seed. They obviously can't drop to fifth or sixth. They are the fourth seed. They will host a playoff game against the uh, fifth seed team. But because of some injuries, it looks like some of them will still start uh, versus Cowboys, which, you know, uh, you might want to just <laughs> might just want to just sign some random players and just let them play. You know, it doesn't matter if you lose. Definitely don't want to get Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Jackson, and and others hurt uh, as well. And let's see. Let's go ahead and make our picks for this week. It's not been a great year for picking. It truly hasn't. But it's okay. We're going to get through it together. Uh, The Jets, no Saturday games. All Sunday and... Do we have a Monday game? (gasps) We don't. We don't have a Monday game. They're all on Sunday. Wow. All right. Here we go. The last week, week 17, 
Jets at the Bills. I'm taking the Jets here. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is healthy, and they said he should play. Uh, I don't think they should play any starters, but actually, I think they still have to because of different craziness that could happen. So, yeah, going with the Jets either way. Uh, Patriots at the Dolphins. This is a weird thing. If the Patriots play their starters, then I'm taking the Patriots. If they sit them out, which most likely they will, I'm taking, I guess, the no, I'm still going to take the Patriots. Screw it. I'm taking the Patriots. Uh, Saints at the Falcons. Going to take the Saints here. I know it's weird, but I'm taking the Saints. Ravens at the Bengals. Taking the Bengals. Steelers at the Browns. Taking the Steelers. Jaguars at the Texans. Um, I'm going to go Texans. I'm going to go with the upset. Let's see some craziness happen at AFC. Uh, I'm going to go Jaguars. Titans at the Colts. That, this is probably why. I, I go for so many upsets that that's what screws me up in my picks. Titans at the Colts, taking the Colts here. Uh, Washington against Dallas. I guess I'm going to go, I don't know. I'm going to go Dallas. I'm going to go Dallas. Last game, going Dallas. Eagles at the Giants, taking the uh, Giants? Yeah, I'm taking the Giants. Yeah, Oh, yeah, taking the Giants. Uh, Lions at the Bears, going with the Lions. Buccaneers and Panthers, taking the Panthers. Raiders and the Chiefs. I'm going with the Raiders. I think they make an upset happen and ch- uh, and stop the Chiefs' uh, winning record. And obviously, with the Raiders not making the playoffs, they want to go out with a bang. And uh, Mari Cooper and uh, Derek Carr want to finish the season on the high note, taking the Raiders. Chargers at the Broncos. Going with the char- no, just joking. Going with the Broncos. Uh, they're a ten point favorite. Wow. Go uh, Seahawks and the Cardinals. I'm taking the Seahawks here. Uh, one, I think the Cardinals. Oh, no, that's right. So, craziness happens. Uh, Panthers basically have to play their players against the Buccaneers because if they lose and the Cardinals beat the Seahawks, then Cardinals then become the number one seed and the Panthers go to number two. So, obviously, they want to keep that number one ranking or, you know, standing, whatever. Uh, But I'm going to take the Seahawks, though. I think Seahawks win. I think they're going to push through. Obviously, it doesn't matter if the Seahawks go nine and seven or ten and six because they're still in the playoffs either way. It just it matters where they're seeding, especially with the Vikings and Packers game, which is Sunday night. Rams and the 49ers taking the Rams here, and again Sunday night, the NFC North Championship is on the line. The winner gets the third seed overall in the NFC, and the loser possibly drops. It depends if the Seahawks lose. Then the Seahawks would be the sixth seed, and the loser, the Vikings and Packers, would go to the fifth seed. But if the Seahawks win, then I guess. Oh, okay. Bear with me. I'm gonna try to explain this in the best possible way. All right, here we go. We're gonna go with the scenario that the Seahawks win. Then that means if the Vikings win, Vikings go to third, Packers go to I believe fifth still. And the Seahawks go to six, even with the Seahawks winning and the Packers winning. I think Packers have the the better NFC record. Um, and since they didn't play each other. All right, they didn't play each other, did they? I don't want to be an idiot. Let me check. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. So the Packers, they did play each other, and the Packers won. Okay, so that doesn't matter then. Basically, it comes out to being if if I can come back. Okay, this. Okay, it's not going to let me. Cool, cool. That's cool. That's cool game. That's cool. Uh, so if the Vikings, basically the Vikings have to lose and the Seahawks have to win, so Seahawks can get the fifth seed, and yeah, that's that's it. Seahawks have to win. Vikings have to lose for the Seahawks to get the fifth seed. Anything else that ha- that happens, Seahawks go to the sixth seed. See how much simpler that was to explain. Said, I'm dumb. Anyways, that is it for today's show. Those are my. Oh, I didn't make my picks on the Vikings and Packers. I'm taking the Packers to win. Uh, the Seahawks might get screwed here because the way it works out is if the Seahawks are the sixth seed, they will travel to Green Bay again, a rematch of week two, which the Seahawks lost by 10 points. Obviously, it was a different Seahawks team, but who knows? Uh, And then the Vikings would travel to Washington. AFC side, that can so much change right there. It's going to be crazy uh, because the Colts can still get in it with a Houston loss and something else that happens. Obviously, the Colts win, but... Uh, Colts can still get back in it. So craziness will happen. We will recap it all and we'll have a clear explanation of what's going to all happen on the show this Monday morning. Thank you guys for joining us. First episode of 2016. 
I'm so excited, and it's going to be a great year. We're going to have more guests on the show. I have interviews planned for this Friday show and next Friday show. Uh, some great interviews with uh, some recruits and some uh, writers from SB Nation. It's going to be great. Thank you guys for making 2015 a great year and for starting 2016 off strong. Thank you so much. Do it. Be the awesome person to share this with your friends and family. Uh, rate it on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever it might be, Spreaker, wherever it might be. Thank you guys so much. As always, God first, God bless. And I will see you guys this Monday morning, same place, same time. I'm out. Peace.